Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's the Craft Beer Storm. I am your host, Mike. And it's Monday. That means we interview somebody special in the craft beer world. And today we have Andrew Coplin. He is the co-founder of Secret Hopper. Very interesting business. They go around and they... uh, uh, they have people uh, just review breweries. They go in, they talk about, you know, he has a checklist of things uh, to uh, give feedback on, which is awesome. But uh, uh, he's coming on now. Let, let's get to it. And we have Andrew Copeland. He is the co-founder of Secret Hopper. How you doing, Andrew? I'm doing pretty well, Mike. And yourself? I'm doing good. Thanks for taking the time out uh, to come on the Craft Beer Storm and talk about Secret Hopper. I, I, I connected with you and uh, Secret Hopper. What's this? I've seen it in the past, but maybe you can, um, you know, tell us about Secret Hopper, like how it started, you know, what your ideas were, where, where you are now, where you're going. Well, what do? well, Secret Hopper is a mystery shopping company specifically for beer. I've worked in a food service for the past nearly 20 years. And, you know, whether you're at a baseball game, a hockey game, concert, or just out to dinner, it's about more than just the meal. It's about more than just the game you're watching. It's really about that whole experience. And I've loved craft beer for so many years. I mean, I was a home brewer. I enjoy just going to craft breweries with my friends. And so I always thought, you know, what can I do to help the industry? Because you want to see all your local breweries succeed. And as the industry continued to grow, and right now I think we're past 7,500 breweries, Breweries need to do more than just make good beer. I mean, obviously, if you're not making great beer, you're going to have some struggles. But you really got to put out a great experience with so many great options to go to. If you're going to decide which brewery to go out to you know, tonight, you're going to pick the one that has the best combination of all of the above, great beer and a great experience. So a couple of years ago, my wife and I had this idea that we could you know, help breweries monitor their customer experience, and we've been pushing along ever since. Well, that's great. I mean, you're helping the industry as a whole, the craft beer industry, and you're also bringing more attention to it, and um, and that's what we're all about. And you know, you you um, care about the local as well, and you're not just. And now, where are you based out of? We're based out of Virginia, but the really cool thing about what we do, I can just easily work with a brewery around the corner here in Virginia, as I can a brewery, you know, up there in New Hampshire. So we get to interact with breweries all over the country every day, and that's. That's really awesome and enjoyable to get to learn about what's going on all over the country. And that's cool. That's why I like doing the podcast, too. I talk to people all over the country and all over the world. Like, I had this dude from India, like a brewer from India. Oh, wow. I interviewed this guy, Goose Island, Shanghai, China. It's, like, really cool. Like, I just connect with these guys. It's awesome. It's fascinating. Yeah. Go ahead. Because you have the same love for craft beer, but in different parts of the weather, it's the United States or just the country. You get to figure out you know, what's working somewhere, what might not be working somewhere, because the trends in India might not be the same as here in the United States, but at the same time, we can learn from one another. Oh, absolutely. In India, the, the crap beer scene is blowing up, like, big time. Like, it's blowing up. It's it's way behind. And then other countries, too, like in Europe, you know, we did a... I talked to a guy in Portugal, too, and he has a brewery, and, and it's just catching hold. Well, the the problem there in Portugal is they're competing with the wine, you know? Mm-hmm. Like they have the Portuguese wine, which has kind of a stranglehold on the thing, and I don't know if they're gonna. Well, they're they're gaining ground, and also what's cool, like in northern Portugal, they can uh, they can grow hops, like the the climate there is perfect for hops, you know. Awesome. And I didn't even know that, right? So I mean, you, you learn something new every day just talking to people. Definitely. But um, so you're uh you started this um. I see your website here, and and how do you how do you connect with people? I mean, and what's what's like the, the crux of it? You get people to sign up, and then they go into breweries and they report back to you. How's that whole process work? Yeah, as you could imagine, we're not at a shortage for people who want a good taste to go visit a brewery. <laughs> so we've had quite a bit of people sign up over the past couple of years. Who what they'll do is select it, they'll go visit a brewery. They'll have a flight of beer followed by a pint of beer, and they'll pay attention to little details about the experience. Simple things that when we say them right now, they might sound like common sense, but they don't always happen. Just little things like, did the bartender greet you when you came in? Did they offer a recommendation? 
Did they introduce themselves? Did they check back with you in a timely fashion? Did they maybe encourage you to start a tab? Or one of my favorites, did they ask you if you want to take any beer to go? So our shopper is going to go, you know, pay attention to these details, complete a questionnaire that's pretty short about their visit following the visit, and we're going to share it with the brewery, and they're going to get paid $20 for their experience. And who doesn't want to have their craft beer hobby funded? So now you you pay the individual that does the um, review twenty dollars. Yeah, that's the standard payment for the visit. We openly advertise that we're not a way to make money, but we're a fun way to go to a local brewery and enjoy a couple beers on us. I think that's a good deal. Tell you the truth. Uh, I would do it myself. They're gonna have several beers. You know, I might sign up for this <laughs> myself. <laughs> I want to go visit some breweries. You know, I'm like here, and it just it really comes in as a heavy been to that brewery, heavy been to that brewery. I'm like, dude, I have no time. Like, I have I have no time to go anywhere. But uh, yeah, I, really, yeah, I was say one really neat thing. It's really cool as we've grown and started to work with breweries all over the place. We have a couple people who they've been secret hoppers for us, not only here on the East Coast, but also when they've gone on vacation to the West Coast, we've been able to send them out. You know, to have a couple beers and help a new brewery out. You know, that makes, that is really great, but it also, and a lot of breweries need this, you know, because they, they think they're doing everything great, but then, you know, you get feedback from people and it's like, this was not good or that beer was not good. And it's great for the breweries to hear this, you know, so that they can tweak it and make adjustments. And it just helps them overall as a business, you know. I mean, you want to find out what's wrong with your brewery and fix it, right? Without a doubt. I mean, hopefully we can help provide a little insight of ways to make their business even more successful. I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. So you've had a lot of a lot of people uh, sign up for this, and um, uh, more than you can imagine. I yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I've heard you in the past. I haven't. I haven't really. Um, yeah, I haven't really dug into it. But now I got you on the phone. So um, so like I see on your your uh, your website here is there's a couple of things that you kind of. Um, uh, are like, you know, a couple of key areas, like first impression, your atmosphere, like engagement on those. Uh, I see your page here, what we do. Maybe you can yeah, I mean, just that. for example, think about your, your brewery. When you go to your brewery, you're there so often. A lot of the things that you see on the daily, you take for granted. But just imagine you've never been there before. What are the first things you're going to notice? What are you going to pay attention to when you're going to order a beer? Are you going to know where to even order a beer? There's certain things that, you know, we might take for granted that are part of a brewery experience, but they really make a big difference in the long run. Oh, yeah. You just want to draw attention to the little things, whether it's your first impression or your engagement with the guests or just, did they thank you and tell you to come back when you were leaving? Is there things that make a difference? A lot of things, like their first impression here, a customer's first impression of your brewery will have a great impact on the remainder of their experience, even before they try your beer. And uh, mm-hmm. and then you let them know what they say. And also, you know, the atmosphere, is the music too loud? Do you smell freshly brewed beer or freshly mopped floors? <laughs> or the bathroom's dirty? I think that's key, man. Like, oh, I don't want to go into some food establishment and the bathrooms are dirty. That's why I'm crazy about that. Like, I tell people behind the bar i'm like dude you got to clean this thing every night every night this thing's got to be spotless because i don't want people going into a bathroom and it's dirty or there's you know the thing is not they don't empty the trash can the thing has got to be spotless because that's a reflection on uh you're making food you know beer is food well apparently new hampshire considers it food it is food (laughs) because they charge me a meals tax for it so but uh (laughs) you know uh it is food, and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go into an establishment again if the bathroom was dirty. I mean, it's horrible. Yeah, if you find a dirty bathroom, you don't want to know what's going on behind where they're brewing the beer. It's really- I mean, Jesus. Oh. But that's a problem a lot with a lot of breweries, too. Like, you have the beers there, and the beers are not... They're off, you know? They're not really... And, and and a lot of it stems from the cleanliness and they're, they're mm-hmm. being very meticulous and really cleaning out these vessels cleaning them like we do like here we do crazy cleaning like you know we look inside we take a flashlight we clean it with some detergent first and then we rinse it out with water then we do like an acid wash and just kill mm-hmm. everything and anything there's just done and then we uh sanitize it before any beer goes in goes into that vessel so um i think that's key for any brewery so it's good to get feedback about that definitely um and then also engagement i mean 
you know, your, your people behind the bar, um, do they engage with customers? Do they give them a pint? Okay, fine. Or give them a sample and then, hey, hey you had the samples. What's your favorite beer? Do you want a pint? And they say, all right, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll get a pint of this. And then, oh, you're leaving? Well, we, we, have, we have beer to go. Why don't you take some of that? I mean, that that's key for a business. I mean, you've turned a, a you know, a sample sale, which is like two bucks into like a pint, which is another like seven bucks. And then you, they take something to go. So a $2 sale is now $15 or $20. So it's a good, it's very key to know if that does oh, yeah. happen or not. All it takes is a little nudge from the staff and then to teach you a little bit about the beer, the history of the brewery. If they can build a connection with you, I guess it's going to spend more money because people like giving money to people they like. So if you can get someone to like you pretty quickly, they're going to spend more money at your business. Oh, yeah. I, I hear it all the time. Well, I give tours and stuff, and you know, and they all they all give feedback like, this guy's passionate. It's awesome. You know, but that's the way you got to be. I mean, you have to you have to love what you do and... and you know, when I when I see reviews that people are just like lackluster and they just don't care, or they didn't attend to them right away, I I go to them and I say, what's going on? Why 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 did we get this review? I mean, is everything okay? Or and maybe they were too busy or something like that. But we just want to make sure that um, people get the best service that they can and get the best beer that they can. So I think this is a good service that you're providing. Um, and you made a brief comment just now about whether a place was too busy and you wanted to see how you could better the experience. I mean, it's our goal to help breweries even during the busiest of times to find a quick way to connect. Because if you and I are talking for only 30 seconds, I can say, hey, Mike, you know, welcome to my brewery. Have you been here before? Can I get you something to drink? Here you go, and have a great time. If you can just throw in those little, you know, key points to build a connection, even just for a few seconds, you're making that person a day better while you're serving them on beer. Oh yeah, I, I when they come in, I'm like, "Have you been here before?" And then I introduce myself, and you know, they love it. They shake their hand, and they're like, "Oh my god, do you own this place?" I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> that's cool." <laughs> and they love Very it, cool. and they buy they buy pints, they buy whatever, they take stuff to go, and they just want to be. Um, that's customer service. You have to make sure your customer is okay, you know, and. Uh, it's a good thing. So I think this is a great way to just, you know, verify that and make sure that there's, if there's areas, like you have uh, areas to improve, like finding out areas to improve. Uh, is it the cleanliness? Is it the people's attitudes, right? Are they following up? And, you know, I mean, it's a business, right? It's cool. Beer is cool, but it's still a business. You have to sell beer, right? So, you know, sample, pint, and then take some home. Um, I always tell breweries that you can make the best beer in the world, but if your staff can't properly sell it, you're wasting it. You got to be able to educate the guests about it, make them want to come back. Absolutely. So the customer service, they'll, they'll, and then they'll, then they'll go out and they'll put you on Instagram or Facebook and they'll say I had a great time and they'll tell their friends and, you know, you just referral, you know, getting people in is, it's excellent uh, marketing as well, you know, just giving them a great experience. So. Yeah, I mean, so you've talked to a lot of breweries and, and brewers. Um, I, I mean, and I think the local aspect is, is important, and we try to strive for that. I mean, what what do you see? I mean, are they act, adding uh, local ingredients to their beer? Are they promoting their local restaurants and, you know, people who are making honey and stuff like that? What are you seeing? Well, I think it really all comes down to that brewery's unique goal because everybody loves to talk about how they're putting local ingredients out there. And whether, you know, you're putting local ingredients in your beer, you're really supportive of your local community. If you can share a story with your guests that they can get behind, like I said, whether it's the local ingredients or you're just really supportive of maybe your local art community or your local charities, those are things people can really get behind and support you more so because they like you. They like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're seeing breweries all over the country put out a bunch of unique events, you know. Some are doing everything from the basic trivia night, but then I talked to one brewery somewhere, they had a Sunday church service at their brewery. Oh, and it wow. was a huge hit, because they were bringing in a unique crowd that might not typically come to a brewery, and a lot of these guests had a first-time brewery experience, and they had a blast, and they became new customers of the brewery. So... Everybody is unique. No brewery is the same, whether New Hampshire or New Mexico. You have to figure out what works for you and just connect with the people in your community to make them want to spend time at your establishment. Absolutely, and I think that's um, 
we we are creating some really holy stuff at a brewery. I think beer is very good. It's it's very magical. <laughs> it connects a yeah. lot of people, and uh, that's why I, I've gotten into it. And you know, I went to the craft brewers conference. I keep saying this, like there was like fourteen thousand five hundred people there in Denver. Uh huh. It's like, where are you going to go where you see 14,500 people smiling and happy? Like, where are you going to go to see that? Like, you can't, there's no other place, I think, you know, and it's all because of beer. Mm -hmm. because of beer. We, we look forward to going there this year. So hopefully, maybe as you go, we'll meet face to face. Yeah. I mean, um, are you going to GABF or no? Do you have like a table there? No, or something? This, no we're not going this year. We went in the past year, but we plan to go to the Craft Brewers Conference. In okay. San Antonio. So you'll be oh you mean San Antonio. All right, good. Yeah, they give they're yes, giving sir. me media passes. It's awesome. I love it. Oh awesome. I got I got one for G A B F too, so I gotta go out there again. You're gonna have a good time. I gotta go. I gotta go. Usually I try to go every other year. We had some tables in the past, not this year, but uh I'm gonna go and, and get some recordings and just talk to a lot of people and connect connect the good people. Uh, so you're gonna have so much fun. Oh yeah. I you you already know that. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's awesome. I got a friend out there too. And we just hang out cool. and drink beer. It's cool. Uh but um and what do you see? Like you, you you've talked to breweries and you you've given them um some feedback. What do you see are challenges that they, they face? I mean, um is it staff, is it is it knowledge of their brewery? What what do you think is the what are most of the challenges of these craft beer? Uh, well, I think are? a challenge that a lot of breweries, especially newer breweries, face is finding time to do everything they want. There's mm -hmm. so many brewery owners who they might be the brewer, they might be the accountant, they might be the janitor, and also swing beer in the tap room. And so for them to receive this feedback, they need to find the time to use it. So we always just encourage breweries to take a step back and take the time to just evaluate you know, your customer experience, whether we're helping them do it or they're, you know, trying to just do it themselves. So mm -hmm. we're just really encouraging breweries to invest in their guests, in that customer experience. Because if you put all your efforts in the beer, then maybe you're lacking some of the other business sides of the operation. And you've missed, mentioned it multiple times in the podcast so far. Running a brewery is running a business. So you have to make sure, you know, you have the skills to do that. You know, at one point in time, you could make really good beer and you could probably be really successful. But in today's competitive market, you have to do more than that and create that overall experience. So I think we're seeing a lot of breweries really put a lot of focus on the marketing side these days. You've mentioned, you know, Facebook, Instagram, all the platforms these days, because those are ways they can gain fans and gain people to come drink beer at their establishments. I think it's very important. Yeah, you got to be out there in front of people. And I can see it in my sales. Like when I'm not there or I'm not in the tap room, then I have a certain amount of sales. But when I'm there and I'm out interacting, you can see the revenue of the day just goes up, you know, like by 50%. Because <laughs> they want to see well, who owns as, it, you know? It's, it's just, yeah. Right. And as a brewery owner yourself, you know, it's tough to find employees that can be as passionate as you. Because it's your baby. So yeah. we really stress to everybody you got to do your best to teach your staff, educate them, and get them to be the first line of force to talk to your guests about your brand. Because if you can get them as passionate as you are, then you're doing something right. And that's how you succeed. Absolutely, yeah. Passion, passion is contagious. Passion is great. Yeah, people love it. They love it. Uh, and... Um, well, you've been so you you've you there's breweries across the country, I guess that you now. How do you interact with them? You say, do you like, like you have these results? Okay, so people go in, they fill out the forms. Do you call them or do you send them a summary or what? What do you do? Like, how do you communicate? No, that's a great thing? question. There, there are two ways we do it. Often we'll do free visits for breweries because I can tell you all day long about you know what we do. But when you read you know about a visit at your business, it hits close to home. So that's one way we help spread the word on what we're doing. But a lot of breweries reach out to us and they request a specific number of visits, you know, each month. So each month we'll send in, say, four or five shoppers. And once those visits have been completed, we'll email them a report. I could send you one of these later to show you what it is. That goes over, you know, the experience that those four or five guests had at the business. And it's not too long. There's something they can read in just a couple minutes, but they can look at it pretty quickly and say, like, oh, my gosh, you know, Andrew behind the bar, he wasn't interacting with guests. He wasn't giving any recommendations. He needs to do a little bit better. So there's things like that. Or they could read it and 
see that, oh my gosh, Mike was just talking to everybody. They loved him. People bought a growler to go. And he really got the place, you know, hopping that night. So we want to provide a service to breweries, whether we're just sending out a free visit or, you know, a monthly package like we offer to them, that provides them value somehow. It's just easy to read, value they can take action from. Yeah, that's great. No, it's just good information for brewers and breweries and just what are they doing right, what are they doing wrong. And now I understand that you, like, I'm trying to re- understand the business, like your business, right? I mean, I know you pay people like $20 for visits. Now, how, how do you get your revenue? I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a really good question. You I'm a CPA to too. Like I'm an auditor. I'm a CPA. So I'm like, all right, this doesn't make sense. Do. If money's just flowing out. This doesn't make sense. So what what happens here? <laughs> So our angle, the breweries will ideally sign on for one of our packages, and we have a three-month starter package. And for that, we send in four shoppers a month. And the average visit rate that we charge is $40 per visit. Okay. So they'll pay us for the visit, and we'll in turn provide the feedback. But a really neat thing, because you like numbers now. You said you're a CPA as well. So one thing that we've found about our secret hops is when we send the shoppers in, they're going to buy a flight and a pint, and that person's going to spend, say, a little bit over 20 bucks. But we've also found that, on average, our shoppers are bringing a friend with them who also spends money. So by tracking their receipts, we see that the average secret hop brings in $43 for a brewery. Okay. And so we believe that any brewery is going to pay for itself. Right. Well, that's great. Yeah, you did. I saw some charts about you know what people spend per day. Uh, on your website, and I think the the well the day, the by far the, the busiest day here is Saturdays. You know that people come in, and I see that on your chart as well. But um, you know, but I, I see that I see that for you. So that's interesting. All right. So now I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, the, everybody keeps talking about maybe a craft beer bubble. Do you think it exists, or do you think there's still room for growth, or what do you think about the industry overall? No, that's a great question. I mean, right now, craft beer takes up about 13% of volume of total craft beer sales. I don't think we're in a bubble as long as the new brewery owners know how to run a business. You know, so many breweries right now have small models. They essentially just want to be a neighborhood tap room. And just think about how many restaurants are in any specific city. If you can make a small restaurant that caters to a certain community, a certain neighborhood, you can be successful. So I don't think we're going to see a lot of larger breweries hopping up there and becoming new regional players. But I do think we're going to see a lot of people taking more of that taproom model and succeeding locally. And oh, yeah. A lot, I even think, a lot of the regional breweries are just abandoning, like the or, – or national breweries are just abandoning the whole, like, yeah, let's make beer and, and go across the U.S. because it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're scaling back and they're bringing everything back. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, we definitely. We've definitely seen that, but the smaller models, the smaller tap rooms. We've even worked with a few breweries in, let's say, Florida, for example. There's a brewery we work with that started in one city, and now they're operating in three different cities in Florida because they've realized that there are communities that don't have a place to go for a good craft beer. So they've filled these voids, and they're doing well for themselves by creating a small tap room model. That's great. Yeah. I mean that that that's what I see. Everything scaling down, like <laughs> to smaller breweries, and and they're making an impact on the large, uh, the regional breweries and the larger ones as well. And you've, oh yeah, a couple of them, like uh, Green Flash, was like got slammed. Man, they went across the U.S. and and they they started pulling back, and then it just got caught. There's other breweries too. They got just try to expand and and just go nuts, and then they get caught as well. And that's funny. You mentioned Green Flash because we're based in Norfolk, Virginia, which is about thirty minutes from the old Green Flash location. Oh, that are you, so, uh, the Virginia Beach? Yes, sir. We're thirty minutes away from there, so you know we were excited when they came in, hmm. and it was almost shocking and sad and frustrating when they left. Well, New Realm is in there now, right, Mitch Steele? Yeah, New Realm's in there. Of a big East Coast brewery now that I think they're trying to become a regional player. They're definitely doing a good job. They've got good marketing and they're putting out a good product. So it's curious, I'd be very curious to see how well they grow the next few years. Yeah, well, they have Mitch really well from uh, Stone. I interviewed him on the podcast as well. And he, he, uh, oh, cool. I'll have to like, listen to that one. Oh, yeah. And he uh, He's a good guy. Actually, he has roots here in New Hampshire. He used to work for uh, Budweiser, Merrimack Valley. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like the quality control there is fantastic. It's like first class, right? 
uh, because that stuff's got to be consistent, you know. So he learned oh, yeah. he learned a load there, and then he went over to Stone, and he just you know made the name for himself at Stone with the Enjoy Buy and and all his other excellent beers that came out of there. Then now he's in New Realm, which is in Atlanta, and then they took over that facility. But that's a beautiful facility there in Virginia Beach. I saw pictures. It of is it. a beautiful. If you ever come up here, let's grab a beer together because it is a beautiful place. It's a whole experience. It's a complex almost. It's very, very nice. Wow. I was in Virginia. I went to Roanoke. I keep saying this. <laughs> they came up here and they said, come on down, you know, put a brewery down there. I'm like, all right, let me go. And I, I kind of went down to Roanoke and poked around and I couldn't make anything happen. Everybody just kind of, I don't know, they kind of disappeared or whatever. But we never know. I mean, may happen again. But uh, I want to come back down to Virginia. I think it's a great place. And Everybody calls me sir, yes sir, no sir. I like, think you don't get that up here. You, you know, get... I say things like yes sir just for my, you know, years in hospitality and customer service. You just say it out of respect to anyone. Yeah, but uh, Virginia, I don't know. It was just the when I went down there. I'm like, my God, it's like, <laughs> so polite. and uh, But that's the way it should be, I think. I don't know. That's the way it should be, you know, respectful of, of, of other people. And I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's a, you know, I think you're doing a great thing. Um, you know, you're, you're promoting the local breweries, which is fantastic. And uh, you're giving them feedback, which is great. You know, they might not know these things and they might, you know, these, these flaws may exist for months or even years and they don't know about it. And you're kind of fleshing it out and then they can give them steps to correct, take steps to correct them. And just improve the customer experience. And if you haven't improved the customer experience, you have returned customers, and then they tell other people about it, and it just helps your business overall. Yeah, so, they're going to spend more money, and it'll make your business more successful. Exactly. Yeah, heck yeah, and that's that's what it's all about. It's a business. It's a brewery. It's a cool thing, but you have to remember it is a business, and you have to make sure that you can make your margins and you can make money. You know, and uh, it's got to make sense. So. Um, but it is passion too. You got you got your passion in it, and sometimes it clouds things. Like if you're passionate about certain things, but it's okay. You know, that's all part of the. That's what makes it great, I guess. You know, mm-hmm. that's what makes it great. But say, hey, if um, one of uh, somebody wants to get a hold of you, or maybe be a secret hopper, how do they do that? Anyone interested in being a secret hopper, you can apply at secrethopper.com. That's S E C R E T H O P P E R.com. Yeah, and you have your website there. They can fill out a form, and uh, even breweries can go on there too and, re- and request uh, some help. And I guess you would connect with them and, and, and you know come to an agreement and then just send people in. You know, and then. Yeah, uh, any brewery can reach out to the site or email me directly at Andrew at. SecretHopper.com, you know, we aim, I mean, we love just talking to breweries all over the place. Whether or not you want to work with us or not, we are fascinated by what's working, what's not working, you know, what breweries are doing in craft beer. We just like talking about craft beer and seeing what's going on, so shoot us an email. It's just an interesting um, industry, and I, I love it. I mean, it's just it's just so different from audit, you know. When I go in and say I'm an auditor, they're like, all right, when are you leaving? <laughs> oh, yeah, such a fun industry. When I say I'm a brewer, it's like, hey, how you doing? You know, what's going on? What, what kind of beer are you making? Can you bring us some samples? You know, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. But it's a good, great industry and, and uh, great people, fantastic people, great American Beer Festival, the Craft Brewers Conference. Uh, just talking to people on the phone, fantastic people. It's a good thing. So yeah, I'm jealous you get to go out this year. Have fun for me. Oh, yeah, I'm so, I'm so psyched. I got my ticket booked and everything. I'm going. Be here before you know it. Damn. You know, it's the end of freaking, it's the end of the summer. Yeah, it'll be here in like a month, right? We're at the end of August. Yeah, real soon. Real soon. So I got to get, I got to get moving. But no, Andrew, I appreciate you coming on and and sharing your uh, business with us. I think it's it's a great thing. You're doing good stuff for breweries and uh, keep it up. And, uh, you know, I appreciate what you're doing. But I'll meet you for a beer in Virginia or somewhere. We got to do that. Hey, I'm going to hold you to it. It was a pleasure talking with you, Mike. All right, cool. Yeah, thank thanks you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, appreciate thanks. It. Yeah, that was Andrew Copeland. He's the co-founder of Secret Hopper. They're doing good stuff. I mean, it's great to just go in, critique breweries. It helps them, you know? Like, if something's wrong, tell me about it and let me fix it, right? 
if it's the people that are serving the beer and they're not engaging properly, you know, we got to talk to them and get them, get them on board. I mean, do they really want to be there or are they passionate enough or, you know, also, you know, cleanliness, right? Bathrooms, you know, make sure those things are speak and span dudes. Cause you're selling food, you know, for me, if I go into a restaurant or something like dirty, I'm out, I'm leaving. I got to go. So that stuff is very important. Um, you know, follow up uh, from your servers. It's a business, right? You sell them a, a little flight, maybe do them a pint and then do something to go. You got to get that flow going, you know, and, and, and it just promote your business, you know. So it's a good thing that he's doing. If you're a brewery, contact him. He's at uh, secrethopper.com. If you're somebody who likes beer, he'll pay you. He'll pay you to go in and do a review. 20 bucks. That's like three beers, four beers. That's pretty cool. Uh, so contact him too at uh, secrethopper.com. And that is our show for today. Uh, if you like what we're doing, you like our guests, please go on to iTunes, give us a rating, give us a review. That's the only way we get up in rankings and we get our, the word out that we exist. You know, they have these algorithms. We'll, we'll just show up more and people will click on our links and they'll listen to our podcast and everything will be great. Get more more brew out to you, you know, more brew news. Get more great guests on and just increase uh, the, the knowledge of craft beer. There's a lot of people who don't know about craft beer. They're just confused. What is this craft beer thing? I'll buy my suitcase. I'll buy my suitcase, a 24-pack for $10, and I guess that's beer. Or I guess that's craft beer. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> and another way we're promoting is we're doing craft beer weekends. Uh, we have a weekend scheduled uh, at the Victoria Inn in Hampton. You need to get up here. It's going to be in, uh, on October 25, 26, 27. We got uh, food and beer pairings for you. We got, um, you know, we got a bus that's going to pick you up and bring you to local breweries. How awesome is that? And then Sunday, we got kegs and eggs for you. We got beer mosa, breakfast stout, all good stuff for you. So if you like beer, it's an educational weekend. I'll do a presentation on, on making beer, right? And I have a brewery. I know how to make beer. And it's not like adding powder to water. <laughs> Forget it. It's not that way. And then we'll have brewers also talk about their beers. It's going to be a great weekend. And we're doing multiple weekends. So as I get them scheduled, we are going to let you know. And if you have a company, hey, you want me to come in, talk about beer? We'll do some food and beer pairings. We'll, we'll put them on a bus, take them to a brewery. You want to do it? Let's do it, man. You know, you're at a hotel, you're at a conference, you want a craft beer evening? Let me know. Michael at craftbeerstorm.com. And that's our podcast for today. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. It's Monday. You got the week ahead of you. And come back on Wednesday because we have beer styles. We go through a uh, Great American Beer Festival list, then we pick a different style every week and we talk about it. What glass to serve it in, the ingredients, the grain, the hoppiness, all that good stuff. Give you examples of the style. There's a lot of styles out there, guys. It's like 102, according to GABF. Actually, they have a new list out. They added to it. And there's subcategories to it. So each each style. So it's crazy. All right, that's what I have for you today. I wish you the great rest of the day, and we'll talk to you on Wednesday. Take care.